Welcome to New Branch Community Church. We're glad you're here today, and uh, we take just a moment to welcome those joining us online and by phone. We have several people to watch the service live, and uh, so we're glad you guys can be with us. Um, we are in a series called Catch the Vision, and um, this series is basically explaining what New Branch Community Church is all about. A lot of churches have members class, and we decided to bring our members class here on Sunday morning and say, hey, this is what our church is like. Here's how you can plug in. And um, not only just this church, but what is God's plan for the church? What are some of the things we have to do? We can't cover it all in one series, but we tried to highlight some of the things. We said, hey, these are the things that we have to know. These are the things we have to kind of come together on. And so today, we're just going to kind of go into part three of this series. If you missed any of them, you can go back online and listen to them or pick up a CD on the way out today. And, um, but today, we're going to talk about part three. So let me just review real quick what we've covered uh, the first step, if you want to catch the vision that God has for the church and for your life, is this, is that you got to say yes to Jesus. And we talked about that in the first message. And i got a picture of um, a cat. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> don't be grumpy, get Jesus. And I, I don't know why it just makes me laugh. I like this. I don't like cats, but I do like this cat. And uh, so, so, but it, you know, he's got a picture that says, I need Jesus. And so for some of us, in the first message, we kind of covered that, hey, God loves us right where we are, that before anything else in, in, in the salvation message from Jesus Christ himself is, is that God loves us and that Jesus Christ died for us and he rose again and he wants to restore a relationship with him. And uh, if you missed that, you can go back and listen to it. Or if you've got questions about that, nothing works until you've said yes to him and make him your savior of your life. But not only making him your savior, but also making him your Lord, which, which is really Two different things. You know, the salvation thing, once and for all, we get that. But making him the Lord of your life, how many are perfect? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody, right? That takes some time. And so he said, hey, the first step after you've accepted him as your Savior is to be water baptized, meaning that, hey, i got a family, and I'm proclaiming, I'm proclaiming my faith in Jesus Christ publicly. And so if you haven't been water baptized, let us know. We'd love to do that. We'd love to talk to you about that. And so we've talked a little bit about what does it mean to say yes to Jesus. That's the first commitment you have to make in order to catch the vision. And then, for the rest of the series, we said we're going to talk about some of the practices that help make him Lord of our life. Some of the practices that help us follow him and some of the things we have to do. And so, last Sunday, we talked about, in part two, we talked about to attend a weekly service. That, that while you've come to faith in Christ, none of us are perfect and that our emotions are renegade, and that we need to learn from God, and we need to worship with, with, with uh, people, and, and we need to come before God and come together in a setting. And, and we looked at the book of Hebrews where it says, you know, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together like some people do, because you need that encouragement, because the day is approaching where it's going to be difficult, and so you need, you need to be gathered with other people. And so we talked a little bit about that last Sunday. Today, we're going to talk about, uh, so if you missed any of that, you can go back online and listen to it at newbranch.net or newbranch.tv. You can watch it or pick up a CD. We do have CDs available on the way out today and, and really look at that because we, we explain it and they're very foundational to what it means to be part of the church. But today, we're going to look at why community groups because that seems to be a little bit of a, a newer concept. Um, a lot of churches don't do it. Some churches do do it. And, and it's not about the methods we choose to use. But in our church, we have community groups. And you might be going, why? Um, we come from Western Branch Community Church, and it, and it had a lot of groups before we started New Branch. And so we just thought, hey, everybody would understand this. Well, that's not true. <laughs> and a lot of people haven't connected or don't understand, why do we do this thing? Why do we, why do we have community groups? And so I want to look at the principle today. And the principle is basically this, that circles are better than rows. And um, we're going to look at that principle today. We're going to take a look at what Jesus has to say about it. That might sound strange, right? Today you're sitting in, in, in rows. And last Sunday we talked about the purpose of rows. And it doesn't mean to say there's not a purpose for rows. But if, because <laughs> you're going like, well, if that's the truth, then why am I here right now? <laughs> why am I listening to you? <laughs> so, so it's not that rows aren't important and it has its purpose. And we said last Sunday how important it is for us to gather. And if you missed that, please go back and listen. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I think it's great to gather. But circles are more important. And, and I'm going to explain that the reason why that is today. And it's something that I believe that Jesus taught us. Um, you know, face-to-face... -face, is better than 
you looking at my face. Does everybody agree with that? <laughs> some, some of you might agree with that one. Right? That growth, life, and accountability happen in the context, not in a, in a corporate setting, but in a smaller setting. And so if you don't have that in your life, it's going to be very, very difficult. And so we're going to take a look at what Jesus said, and, and it's just one of the reasons why a group is important. It's not the only reason. I, I, I thought about covering, and I've done this in the past, where you know, we can get all the, the, you know, all the Bible verses that speak about small groups. I thought about doing that. But today, I just want to look at one verse. Everybody's going, amen. <laughs> okay, so today we're just going to look at one verse, and we're going to kind of look, and, out, and I'm going to pull out some other verses. But, but I want us to look at a concept that Jesus taught, because I really think it's at the heart of why it's so important that we move from just sitting in rows to moving to circles. Okay, so here we go. Luke chapter 17, verse 1. We're going to put it up on the screen, and uh, you, can, uh, you can follow along with me in your outlines. It's the only verse that's in your outline today. Um, or in your Bibles. So here we go. Luke 17, verse 1. Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. Jesus is teaching his disciples many things, and and this verse goes on to teach more than just the part we're going to cover today. And we'll come back to that another day. Um, So he's basically saying two things here. One is he's saying, that everyone is going to stumble at some point. And then he says, woe to those that cause people to stumble. And then he goes on this thing, and he talks all about how that if you make somebody stumble, how bad it will be for you, that you might as well put a millstone around your neck and throw yourself into the sea if you cause a person young in the faith or, or a child to stumble, that it would be better for you to throw yourself into the sea. And that's really a cool message, and I want to preach that one one day. <laughs> but for today, I just want to focus on the first part. Okay? The first part where he says that, that there's things that will come that are going to make you stumble. They're bound to come in your life, that they will come. It's not if. It's not if something will come that make you stumble. It's when. So, so, so if you're not stumbling right now or you can't even imagine yourself doing it, Jesus is saying, no, it will come. You will, you will turn a corner in life and, and, and eventually you will stumble. Um, in, in the Koine Greek, and I usually don't use these kind of words, but the Bible was written in, in the Greek. And so the way they, they talked was they would put the most important word up front. So, so actually the way it's written in, in the Greek would say this, it would be impossible it is for stumbling block not to come. Okay? Sounds like Yoda, doesn't it? <laughs> so, so you might want to write it down. In fact, we got a slide for it because I think it's that important to understand. Impossible it is. Can you hear Yoda saying that? Impossible it is. <laughs> to block... <laughs> you can't say that in church. <laughs> to block for not to come, right? It's impossible for a stumbling block not to come in your life. So, so what do I mean by that? Things that blindside you. It's impossible. It's impossible for you to, to, to turn every corner in life and not, there's some things you're not going to see coming and they're going to cause you to stumble. Um, things that keep us from being involved in church. Some of you've had that, right? You've kind of stumbled out of church. And when I say church, I want to be careful because I don't mean the relationships and we'll get into that in a minute. What I mean is, is the organized church or sitting in rows. That there's people that, that come for a while and then they kind of stumble out and then they hit a crisis point and then they kind of stu- come back in and then they stumble back out. You get, you get the idea? It happens, doesn't it? And, and, and even in our relationship with God, right? Reading the Bible every day and praying and spending time with God, we can stumble out of that, can't we? And it happens. Basically, it means this. Anything that leads one to act contrary to a proper course of action or set of beliefs. So anything that leads you, that, that's what it means. Anything that leads you to a contrary, to, to a proper course of action or set of beliefs is something that makes you stumble. Um, and, and I think we all kind of understand what that's like. Uh, as smart as you are, and many of you are very smart. You're, you're much smarter than I am. So, some of you are off the car- chart genius. Some of you have a lot of book smarts and, and you, you went all the way through school. <laughs> uh, some of you don't have, you know, book learning, <laughs> but you have street smarts. <laughs> You've met those. <laughs> and you do. You have a lot of street smarts, and you're very smart. But as smart as you are, you will stumble. That's what Jesus is saying. As spiritual as some of us are, and some of you are very spiritual. You can tell it. 
You, you, that, that, you, that you've allowed the Holy Spirit to fill you in your life, meaning that he empowers your life and you're living out and, and you're living very spiritual and you're connected to God. But as spiritual as you are, you, you'll stumble. Okay. As mature as some of us are. And what I mean? As much life experience as you have and, and as much experience as you've had in your life, it doesn't matter how much experience you've had, you, you can stumble. And if you look through the Bible, you'll see this over and over and over again, that even the Apostle Paul, you know what he said? He said, I keep pressing for the mark. This is the Apostle. This is at the end of his life. That I might not, <clears throat> that I might not be disqualified. Did you know, you know he said that? Why? Because he understood something, that, that as mature as I am, I could still stumble. Bible knowledge, as knowledgeable as you are. Some of you, I could, I could read the reference and you could tell me the verse. You know? <laughs> I could read the verse and you could tell me the reference. I could say, you know, the name of a person and you would give me where it's found at in the Bible. Some of you can tell me all the, the, the Greek and the Hebrew and the past tense and the present tense and all the things that, you know, sometimes bore me to death. But anyway, some of you, got, you guys got, you got that down, right? <laughs> no, it's not. It's very good that we know those things and it's so important. And, and some of you are just, a, you know, a great mind and you're challenging and you're, and you're learning and, and you're learning the Word of God and you're teaching other people. But can I tell you, as much as we know, We'll still stumble. That's the point. Um, Jesus said we will stumble. We'll stumble out of church. So it can happen. It can happen. This is why, this is why it's so important. We can stumble in our beliefs. I don't know if that makes sense. And I don't mean stumble out of our salvation. What I mean is, is sometimes somebody can challenge us or sometimes somebody can bring up such an argument that we can actually stumble in the way that we're thinking or the way that we're believing. And ideas have consequences. And all of a sudden... You'll see people stumble out of their values. Have you ever seen that? People, one time, we held this high moral standard, yet, yet we find ourselves looking at things or, or watch, looking at pornography or, or, or going back to an old lifestyle. We stumble. It happens. And, and here's some of the causes of why we stumble. Um, it, one of them can be this, that sometimes relationships change. You ever had that happen? Sometimes one of the things that cause us to stumble is when a relationship changes, either somebody dies and you're going, they're not here anymore. And that person that you loved or that grief that you have keeps you and it makes you stumble and it, and it puts you by yourself. It puts you out of where you normally were at or somebody moves away. I had an accountability partner and now he moved away or we had a rift in our friendship and now I'm drifting. I'm stumbling. You get the idea? Here's another one that might not seem like it, but it, but it does. Wealth. Seems like that would make us come closer, doesn't it? But oftentimes, wealth keeps us away. It causes us to stumble. Um, and, and we've seen that. You know, wealth doesn't fix everything. In fact, sometimes it messes everything up. If you, if you look at the people that have won the lottery, they can tell you some of them have been the most miserable people, and they say, well, I wish I never won that money in the first place because it changed their life in a bad way. And some of us see that we live in a very wealthy nation, and sometimes it keeps us from depending on God. I'll give you a verse. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8. You can look it up for yourself. Solomon wrote, he said, Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty, because poverty can keep me away, nor riches. That sounds funny. But give me only my daily bread. You know, I think Jesus might have been quoting that when he said, Give us this day. Our daily bread. You know, he understood. If you make me too rich, I'll forget about you, God. So sometimes wealth can keep us, it, it can make us stumble. It gives us too many options. When we're poor, we have no options, and that makes it hard. And sometimes that can keep us from God. But if we're too rich and we have too many options, it keeps us away from God, believe it or not. The other thing that does sometimes is hard times. Sometimes they, they draw us to our knees, right? In the hardest, most crisis time in our lives, we'll come to church or we'll, we'll fall on our knees. But as it progresses, sometimes it causes us to get angry and bitter. And, and have you ever found yourself there? Where you're going, God, how could you allow this? And then once that happens, it's like you just kind of stumble out of the other things in your life. It happens. Jesus said it's impossible to get out of this life without stumbling. It is. So let me ask you, do you think that's true? Do you think that you could stumble in your faith? Do you think you could stumble in your beliefs? Let me, let me put it a different way. Do you think you could stumble in your moral 
values. Some of us know. We've done it, right? We, we have, we've got the scars to prove it, and so we know, we know that that's possible. You know, it doesn't really matter if we think we can or not. <laughs> In fact, the Bible goes further to say, the one that thinks they stand, <laughs> take heed, lest they fall. Because you're, you're, you're in for a harder fall if you think you can stand on your own. <laughs> and, and it really doesn't matter what we think because Jesus is saying, yes, you, not only could you stumble, you will stumble. You will stumble. Let me ask the parents, do you think your children can stumble? <laughs> huh? You think the little one that, you know, they're singing Jesus loves me, and then they become a teenager. Can they, can they stumble? I gotta be careful. My son's here today, so sorry. Son. <laughs> but they can, right? I mean, and, or they go away to college, and can they stumble in that environment? When they get out of your environment and they get into that new environment, sometimes they can stumble. Is that right? Impossible it is for stumbling blocks not to come. It's impossible. It's easy to stumble out of church. It's easy to stumble in our beliefs. It's easy to stumble out of our relationship with God. What do I mean? One time we were spending time with him every day, and then it's easy to stumble out of that, isn't it? You ever had that happen? Something came up, or it got busy, or, or some crisis happened, or I got kind of angry with God, and I didn't want to say it, but the truth is it kept me from him, right? But let me tell you, this is why I want to talk about this today. It is almost impossible to stumble out of one thing. It's almost impossible to stumble out of community. Did you know that? When I say that, I don't mean that you can't leave community that you're involved in. But when you're in relationship with people, it is very hard to stumble out of that when people not know. You can stumble out of a program. You get it? You can stumble out of coming here on Sunday morning. But it is almost impossible if you're meeting on a regular basis with people, it is almost impossible for them not to notice or them not to challenge you. Now, you can walk away from them. You can kick them out of your life. But you're not going to get there without being proactive because they're not just going to let you go. Is that right? It's true. Because why? Because it's relational. It's tangible. And people pay attention. People you're in relationship like that pay attention. They know. They notice that you're not there. You know, on Sunday morning, it's kind of hard. Were they here today? And sometimes I've called people and say, hey, we really missed you today. <laughs> and they go, I was there. <laughs> I go, oh, no, you know. Because sometimes it's hard to see, or at the end of the service, everybody's moving and stuff like that. And so in a setting like this, in, 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 the, in the rows, it's easy to miss. In the circles, it's very difficult for us to say, yeah, I didn't notice that person that's here every week. They're not here. Or that person I have a cup of coffee with every week didn't show up. You would notice. You would call. You would find out. You get it? It's almost impossible to stumble out of community. Community. Community groups, that's what we want to call them. It's, it's like a family, okay, in one way. But I want to tell you how it's a little bit different than your biological family, okay? Because here is how it can be just a little bit different. Because when you're in crisis, oftentimes you'll pull away from your family. You won't share. And I don't know if this makes sense. It took me a little while to grasp it. I heard Andy Stanley say it, and I thought, but that's really true, you know? Hey, think about it. When, 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 when you're struggling, men, if we we're going to be real honest, if you're struggling with pornography, the first person you want to talk about it with is not your spouse. Is that true? That's right, isn't it? And you will stumble, but you won't share that. You get it? Or, or, or if you're stumbling in your finances, you don't want to tell them that there's a problem over here, and, and not until it's a big crisis, then, then sometimes you do. And we should share with our family. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that family's not a place of support, but I'm saying if it's just your family, it may be a little too late. And let's just be honest with our kids as they grow. Do they share with us as parents? Are we, are we the first ones that they come to every single time? No. It wouldn't be nice if they were, yes. But that is why it's so important. And this is why it's an addition. Because some people say, well, I got my family, so I don't need that stuff. See? I come sit in rows, but I don't need that stuff. And I, and I hear you. But I need to explain why it's so important that we have circles. Because if you miss this part, You'll become a casualty, and I've seen it a thousand times. I've seen people stumble, and it's like they're doing so great, and then they stumble. 
and then they stumble. That's why it's so important. It's so important to be part of a regular, predictable, structured community. You get why? Because it's almost impossible to stumble out of that. Why predictable? Because I see you all. I see you. I know you. They, you know me. I can't, and, and it's not one way or the other. And when you look at the Acts 2 dynamic, that's kind of what they had going. Where one person fell, the other person helped them up. But you can't do that if you don't know each other. You get it? You can't do that if you're doing it all by yourself. Being all by yourself is the most dangerous place in the entire world. And the person who taught the principle was the richest, wisest man who ever lived, Solomon. And we're going to talk about Ecclesiastes. In fact, we'll put the verse up on the screen. I want to read the verse. But before I do, I want to tell you something about Solomon. The richest, wisest man who ever lived gave the best advice right here. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. He gave the best advice that anyone could ever get. And we're going to read that. But can I tell you, he didn't take his own advice. <laughs> okay, Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Most of us understand that. There's a synergy that happens with two people. Two horses pulling in the same direction. It's not they, they pull twice as much. Some of them pull four, ten, twenty times as much. That, that's the synergy that happens when people are together. We get that. We understand. A, a fighting unit. We, we understand. If you're military, you will get this. That a fighting unit, if you add two guys, one guy with a gun is one thing, but two guys, a whole different thing really is. A whole different thing. So there's a good return on the labor with two, okay? If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. That's the principle we're talking about here today. If anyone falls down, the other guy will be right there because he's right beside you. Buddy up. When we go hiking, you know what we do? We have people there with us because some of us are getting older and we might fall down and not get up, you know? I mean, it could happen to me. You know, you put this big strap on and you're going, oh man, I'm going to die here. Uh, but, but here's the part I want you to see. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Pity. Pity the person that has no one. Pity, pity the person that knows so much but has nobody when they stumble. Pity the person that's so mature. <laughs> pity the person that comes to church every week, but when they stumble, they have no one. Pity them. It's the worst place in the world to be because they have nobody to help them up. <laughs> the most difficult phone calls I get are when people call and they're in crisis. John, you don't understand. My son, they just went back on drugs. They just went back to drinking. John, John, my husband left me for somebody else. Man, John, we're in crisis, you know? Somebody died, something happened, and, and, and that person, and, and the first question that we ask, as elders, you know what we ask? Is that person in a group? <laughs> it, you know what we mean by that? It's not, it's not because we're structured. It's not because we don't want to help. Because we want to know, is there somebody that knows them? Is there somebody that's in relationship with them? Because here's what I know, and here's what I've learned. The ones that aren't, pity the person that has no one when they fall. And it's not that we can't build them, and it's not that we don't want to help them, and it's not that we don't try to reach out to them during the crisis. And many of us, we don't turn until we're in crisis. Most people don't walk through the doors of the church, let's just be honest, until there's a crisis. That's okay. You're welcome. That's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is, is from here where we go, don't think that you're not going to stumble. You've got to have relationships. <laughs> Someone to help us up. Can I come back to Solomon just for a minute? The richest, wisest person who ever lived. I'm, I didn't say that. God said that about him. I made him the richest, wisest king of Israel that ever lived. He wrote Proverbs. It's an amazing book. He wrote Ecclesiastes, an incredible book to read. But can I tell you something about Solomon? He didn't take his own advice. And if there was anybody on the planet that should have been able to say, I don't need advice. Why would I need to hear from you? I'm smarter than anyone on the planet and ever will be. So why would I need to listen to you? Get it? Oh, because you can't be objective with yourself, Solomon. 
and a man who had the most potential of anyone. There is nothing ever been like him on the planet. In fact, the only thing that, that, that is talked about that, that is better than Solomon is when Christ himself returns. You know, that's how they compare it, the golden age of Israel under Solomon. He died a fool. Did you know that? He died worshiping idols on the hill. Oh, it says he worshiped God. If you read, if you read at the end of Kings, you know what you find? You find that Solomon worshiped on the hills. He worshiped God. And then it said he went up to the high places and he worshiped these false gods. And he died in obscurity as a fool. And then the kingdom was ripped in two. What a great legacy. No, no legacy. A terrible legacy. <laughs> because why? Because of this. Pity the one who has no one. Unfortunately, he's talking about himself. Solomon, we feel sorry for you because at the time where you were making bad choices, you had no one that could have spoke up and said, Solomon, what are you doing? You are the son of David. What are you thinking? Why would you do that? Nobody could speak into his life. He had no counsel. Get it? He had no advisors. He had no one that was there that was in his inner circle. You get it? Oh, he sat in rows a lot. He sat in the temple a lot. But he had no circle. <laughs> you starting to see why it's so important? Here's what you got to understand about stumbling. When people stumble, they don't want to be helped back up. I can tell you because I've done it. And, and I could do it again. And when I stumble, I don't want your help. <laughs> I don't want help. I want to isolate. I want to live and whatever it is, if I'm bitter and angry, I don't want you around me. I'm going to push you away. You get it? This is why it's so hard. Because when you stumble, you will naturally push. You will naturally try to get people out of your life. <laughs> it, it, maybe, maybe you can write this quote down. When you stumble, what you need most, you desire least. See? What you will need the most, you will push it out. I've seen it, and we've all seen it. And if you are not in relationships, if you're not in these circles and you're not in relationships when the crisis hits, you won't come seeking them out. Can I tell you that? Trust me. Some of you know. You got the scars to prove it. Yeah, I did that thing. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Anybody got those? <laughs> we can make a whole website of that, right? <laughs> it seemed like. <laughs> because here's what I know, guys. You can stumble out of programs. You, you can stumble out of the areas where you serve. But you can't stumble out of relationships. You can't. They'll notice. They'll notice. You need someone who refuses to go away. You know what I'm talking about? I don't mean that they go into the bar with you. I don't mean that they enable you. I don't mean that kind of person. What I mean is, is that before you leave, they're calling up saying, where are you at? What are you doing? What are you thinking? And so you might leave. But you won't leave without knowing that it, it, it'll take some intentionality. And that one moment might make all the difference in the world. Did you know that? that? One single cup of coffee, I can tell you. There's a reason why I'm not in jail today. And that's not a joke. Because somebody in that one moment paused and said, no, 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 don't, don't do what you're thinking. I know you're mad. I, I know you're angry. But would you sit down with me? I probably wouldn't be standing here. <laughs> because somebody took the time to challenge me. And I couldn't, I, could, I stumbled out of a lot of things. But I couldn't stumble out of a relationship. You get it? <laughs> it's the reason why circles are more important than rows. You get it? You get what we're saying here? Imagine this. Imagine if your father... I always had a great father. I had a great father. But I'm imagining even my father, there's some things I know about him other people don't. You know, my dad was a pastor, great man. But he had some things in his life. And I always thought, you know, there was something with his generation where they kind of held people here. They never let people in. And there were certain areas in his life, and I know he wouldn't mind me sharing because it might help you. His weight was a problem for him. And it, and it caused some real problems for his life. 
His finances were a problem. Nobody took the time to help him. Nobody, nobody could. Nobody could get in. You get it? Because he was taught. That's private. You get it? Imagine your father. So, some of you understand. They drank or they did this or they left or they, they hurt people or they did something. Imagine if there was a group of men that came around your dad. How would his life have been different? Oh, wait a minute. How would your life have been different? Your, your parents, if, if somebody would have helped them, you know, some of you were, your parents were divorced, maybe they couldn't help it or whatever. But, but imagine if a couple had came around them and been able to speak into their life, how would our life have been different? Imagine when we were in the 10th grade, if somebody would have said, here's Financial Peace University, you need to come to this. <laughs> and we were all millionaires today. Because <laughs> that's what Dave Ramsey said. If we had invested that money that we blew today, even at 41, I would be a millionaire, but I'm not, <laughs> right? If somebody would have came alongside us, if, if right now during your crisis, if you had somebody to have a voice in your life before we make the mistake, you see what I'm saying? Before, not, not calling after, we all do that. Oh man, I made a big mess. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the voice of reason that hits you right before you make the mistake and you go, oh wow, you saved my life. And then you get to do that for other people. That is what group is all about. That's why we need groups. That's why sitting in rows won't work. You know why? Because you can stumble out of the row. Okay. And, and when you stumble, you won't be sitting in the row. And no one will notice. We'll try. We really try. But we might not notice. It's why we need you in group. And I've watched it a thousand times of people coming and then they leave. They'll come for six weeks and then you won't see them for six weeks and then they'll come back with a new story. Sometimes it's good. A lot of times it's not good. And it's that process. And so what are we doing? We're going, if I could only get you in the group, would it make your life perfect? No. Are the people in groups' lives perfect? No. But they got someone that cares. Get it? It's why we need group. Some of you have done this, and it's been amazing. It's not perfect. But some of us I've watched, and you have done this, and you've been involved in people's lives, and we've seen life change. And it's a messy thing being involved in people's lives, isn't it? But we have seen God change our lives together, and where we're weak, they're pulling us up, vice versa, because we gather. We're not doing it perfect. We've got lots more room to grow. There's all kinds of things we'd love to do with the community group, and we'll do. But the point is it works. We've seen it work. So here's my challenge for you today. Will you join a group? <laughs> Will you join a group? Will you be part of a group? If it's not here, then where? But if it's here, we have community groups for that very reason. Impossible it is not to stumble. Let me ask you a question, though. Who will be there for you? Who do you got because you will stumble. And when you do, you're going to need somebody. Now, now let, me, let me say what some people are already thinking. I tried that, and it didn't work. <laughs> okay? just wanted to dispel this myth, because I used that one before, too. I did it, and I had a bad experience. I did it, and I got hurt. And I don't mean any disrespect when I say this, because a lot of people do. But let's just be honest. Some of us have had bad haircuts in the past, haven't we? Charles? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's, it looks good on you. See, God knew some people's heads, like mine, he gave me hair because you would not want to see this head. So I get it. So sorry, Charles. <laughs> but some of us have bad haircuts, but it doesn't mean we don't get another haircut. Is that right? Some of us have went to restaurants, and we got bad service, didn't we? And it was a terrible experience. But it doesn't mean that we don't eat again, right? I mean, right? Some of us have had some bad relationships, but it doesn't mean we don't try again and again and again. Why? Because it's impossible not to stumble and pity the one. We're not mad at you. We're sorry for you. Because when you fall, and you will, no one will be there to pick you up. And guys, if there's anything as a pastor I could give you, it would be that. Because I see it all the time. And they call, but it's way after the point. And if only someone had been there. You get it? So I'm challenging you today. 
get in a group. You need somebody. Some of us are in group, and then I'm going to ask you something too. Some of you have experienced the benefit, and you're going, yeah, that's right. I know what that's like. Would you help somebody else? It is not easy. If there's anything I learned about community group, it's this. It's not easy to get in. I thought it was. It's not. It doesn't mean we're not inviting. It doesn't mean we make it hard for you to get in. It means to really bond. Because some of us have went to group, but we've never really went to group. You know what I mean? We've never really shared. And what I'm asking is, is whether you've been to a meeting, you hear me? (laughs) Some of us have been to meetings. We've never been to group. We've never moved from rows. We're doing rows and group. That's why we say it's not just a Bible study. We want to study the Bible. We want to go deeper. But if we're not doing this, it don't matter how much we know. You understand why it's so important that circles are better than rows? We've got to move, guys, because impossible it is for you not to stumble. Who will be there to lift you up? All right, here's what I want to do. Here's how I want to close today. I'm actually closing early. (laughs) Amen, brother. Yeah, I know. (laughs) And now you know it can be done. Okay, so here's what I got. (laughs) Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to pray. And before we do that, I want the group leaders to come. The group leaders are going to gather around some tables, okay? And, um, And if you're in a group, you can go hang out around that group or help some people go over to the tables. We have made this as easy as we can. We have Krispy Kreme donut holes or maybe a generic donut hole, but we're going to say Krispy Kreme. It makes people excited. <laughs> Last Sunday, we talked about getting donuts. This Sunday, we have them. <laughs> there you go. And so you, get, you can meet a group leader. You can have some coffee with a group leader. There's connect cards over there. These are not to turn in because you got another connect card to turn in on the way out. But this is just so if you want to give them your information, they can contact you. You can do that. Not all of our group leaders are here today. Some of our groups have been revamped, so you might be looking at the screen going, wait a minute, I don't see one of the groups up there. It's because some of the groups are in transition, and we don't want you to invite you to a group that might be changing. We want to work that out. Uh, if you're like, hey, you know what, I don't find a group that fits me right now, or I'm not quite ready for that, that's okay. What I want you to do is, is talk to a group leader before you leave. Find out what we got. We're going to be starting some new groups this year, next year, and uh, we, got a big, we got a big opportunity for you, and it's this. Financial Peace University is coming. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to meet in rows, and then we're going to divide up into circles during that, okay? And so there's going to be a lot of groups that come up out of that. So um, just wanted to point that out to you. I also have Albin Ronstrom's going to be here. He's here somewhere. And, um, and he does our teens. So if you know a teens that need to be part of a group, we don't really have an official group for them yet, but we're working on that. Because let's just be honest, you think our teens need a group? <laughs> Impossible it is for them not to stumble, right? On a daily basis? <laughs> okay. So, so meet a group leader, guys. Don't just sneak out on us today. We, 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 we got donuts, so please don't leave. <laughs> Come, talk to us. Get involved. This is your opportunity, okay? It, it, don't, don't say, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Because you know what? Tomorrow might be it. Get it? Too late tomorrow. Today is the day. So let's stand for prayer, and then I want you to talk to some people. Father God, I come before you today, and Lord, I hope, I hope that I could convey words, but, but honestly, God, today I'm, I hope that it, it hits the heart, and only you can do that. So I hope, God, we open ourselves up to each other, because I really know, God, that you're, you're teaching us. Impossible it is for us not to stumble. And, and, the, and the hardest part about this whole truth is, is, Lord, any of us can stumble. And we look at the Apostle Paul, and we look at how you challenged us, that means me. That means the most mature person in the room. And that's not, I'm not the most mature person in the room. So I know that if I can stumble, everyone can stumble. And Lord, I've watched people a lot better than me stumble. So God, please, please help us to gather. Please help us to have those relationships that we're not pitied, but that we have someone to help us up when we fall. And God, what if we could be that kind of church? What if we could start to gather in that way? Wouldn't that be something, Lord? Please help us. Help us, Lord. Help us to do that. Lord, I pray for the one that's scared today, that's going, I don't know if I want to do that. I just want to get out the door as fast as I can. Or or the one that's saying, I don't want anybody to know that about me. God, today, let them open up for the first time. Let them open their lives up to other people. That when we stumble, not if, but when we stumble, Lord, we'll have somebody to help us up. 
Father, that's our prayer today. Lord, help us connect. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.